Okay, so I just want to talk through my thoughts on this book. This is The Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson. I wanted to read this book because of Jennifer Doudna and her work on CRISPR. CRISPR is this gene editing tool that uses enzymes to snip out sections of DNA to be replaced with modified genetic code. And Doudna was a prominent scientist that worked with a small group of people that developed this back in 2012. I wanted to learn about that process, but more importantly, I wanted to learn about her life. She's arguably one of the most interesting people in the world because she's at the forefront of this technology that's gonna change everything. And sure enough, last year, Isaacson published this book. But here's the bad news. I don't have much to say about this book because it really isn't a book about Jennifer Doudna. See, when I read a biography, I, I wanna get inside that person's head. I wanna understand what their life was like, their habits, their mannerisms, relationships. I wanna know what drives them. I, I wanna get to know this person better so I can learn from their experience and incorporate those lessons into my own life. That's my expectation whenever I read a biography. Sure, there's gonna be plenty of uh, subplots and storylines along the way that contribute to the book, but the through line, the focal point, has always gotta be centered on that person. And unfortunately, this book doesn't meet those expectations. This review of mine is gonna be pretty short because after reading the book, I don't know anything about Doudna that I couldn't have learned from simply watching a few interviews of her on YouTube. I got the impression that Isaacson didn't really feel like her story could carry the weight of a book on its own. After about the first hundred pages, going over her backstory, the narrative quickly starts to shift to all of the other scientists who are racing to discover CRISPR. And there's large sections of the book where she's totally absent. She ends up being an afterthought until you get to the end of the book and she's briefly kind of rushed back in to usher in a discussion on COVID and the absolute good of mRNA vaccines. That's a direct quote or referring to 2020 as the plague year, which I thought was hyperbolic to say the least, or advocating for advancing the cause of health justice. This wasn't a book about Jennifer Doudna at all. This was an opportunity for Isaacson to virtue signal to his largely liberal reader base. Having only covered male subjects in his prior books, now he gets to take the license to make up for lost time and expound on the rampant sexism in the scientific community. And he focuses on that theme a lot throughout the book. But in the brief instances where you actually do get to hear from Doudna, it's clear that she's focused on the science. And that comes across in all of her statements throughout the book. She acknowledges times in her life where she's encountered prejudice, but she was never marginalized because of it. In fact, her path of developing as a scientist is full of these male figures that encourage her and support her as she grows into the person that she is today. She doesn't seem like somebody who identifies as a victim or dwells on that low-hanging fruit. She's too busy accomplishing her goals. And ironically, Isaacson comes across, perhaps unwittingly, playing the role of a protective, almost parental figure who's wagging his finger at the reader. He makes sure to take multiple shots at James Watson throughout the book, who discovered the double helix structure of DNA along with Francis Crick, which is just as groundbreaking as the work that Dowden has done, if not more so. I think Walter wanted to write a book about gene editing and about COVID, and he included Doudna as this strong female icon that he hoped would draw in enough support from a liberal readership to rally around so that they would stick around long enough for him to expand on these other topics that he obviously found more interesting. This is a think piece masquerading as a biography of someone who is a truly extraordinary scientist. I'm unimpressed by this effort and Dr. Doudna should be as well because her work and her life for that matter warrants a book that doesn't 
have some ulterior motive attached to it. And you know, maybe if Isaacson hadn't been so busy virtue signaling about women and science, he would have realized his first female subject wasn't even the focal point of his own book. Perhaps he could have actually written something that would have cut through all of the social justice warrior nonsense and allowed me to pursue my curiosity about this incredible woman and her brilliant mind and give me real meaningful insight about her and the same way that he did Steve Jobs and Einstein and all of the other biographies he's written. So like I said, this may be the first book I never regret reading a book. I can always take away something from the experience regardless, but it's the first book I've read that turned me off from a subject that I was curious about. I'm coming away from the book less interested, more cynical, and more pessimistic. And that's the opposite of what a good book aims to do. So I could be wrong. Maybe that's just my take. I wouldn't discourage you if you want to read it for yourself. Maybe you'll get something different from it that I did, but that's my take on the book. Now, on the other hand, there are five books I've read this year that I've absolutely loved. If you want to check those out, I made a video that you can watch right here. Thank you as always for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video.